All right, Galatians chapter number 6 in your Bible, and we're going to look at just a few verses here this morning. Galatians chapter number 6, and we're going to read verses 2 through 5. Chapter number 6, verses 2 through 5, and I'm excited that we are continuing to go verse by verse through the Word of God. I love how God teaches us every single week about uh, how we need to live and, and what God has called us to do. And uh, this, this Sunday is no different where God is instructing us here in Galatians chapter 6, verses 2 through 5. Let me read it to you. It says this. It says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Verse 4. But let one test his own work and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. Verse 5 says, for each will have to bear his own load. Can I start out by saying this this morning, that there will always be pressure to act like we have it all together. There will always be pressure to act like we have it all together. When I was a teenager, you have to understand, teenage years can be difficult, right? And you think back to your teenage years of embarrassing moments and things that you did to try to impress your friends and try to have this idea that, man, I've got it all together. In the teenage years, this can be really really a big pressure. I remember when I was 14 years old, I went to summer camp, and our church had a summer camp that we'd go to every week. And I was excited about it. I was excited about going, and uh, so I went to this camp, and it was Camp Calvary, Christian camp, and they had all kinds of fun stuff that they would do. They'd, they'd have zip line in the lake, and one of the things I remember sitting there uh, thinking about what I was going to do with my free time. They gave you a, a, kind of a big block of free time every single day, and I remember at lunch, they announced we, are, we have paintball sign-ups, paintball sign-ups. And I said, ooh, paintball. I've never played paintball before. I think I, I'd like to do that. And I've heard, you know, some of you like me, you've heard, well, it really hurts, and, it, you know, you get well, and all these different things. I thought, ah, that's okay, right? I'm a tough 14-year-old. I can take it. And so I remember going down, signing up for paintball, and you went down, and they walked you through all these different things. Now, here's the thing. As a 14-year-old, I did not want to get welts. I didn't want to get hurt. And so I remember it was summertime. It was like June. It was probably 100 degrees, probably 150 with humidity. But I was not going to allow any paintball to hurt me. And so I made sure that when I went down to the paintball course, I had like three pairs of pants on. I had a sweatshirt. I had another sweatshirt on. You know, I had gloves on. I had a beanie hat on. I mean, it's 120 degrees outside. But I'm walking in like I'm going to, a, you know, going sledding. But I was going paintballing. And I remember walking down, I mean, I was, you know, I was like kind of like out of breath, I was really hot, I was getting sweaty, and they walked down, and there was this guy, and there's always like that one guy who's like that instructor who takes his job a little too seriously, right? He's like, you know, maybe a junior in, in college, but he's like going to tell you and instruct you on paintball. I remember, he said, all right, folks, I've got a couple rules when it comes to paintball. First of all, don't take off your mask. So he handed us a mask, and I put my mask on, and of course, I'm just sweating like crazy. And so all of a sudden, as soon as I put my mask on with all the sweat and the heat, my mask starts fogging up, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, trying to, I didn't want to take off my mask. Very obedient, very obedient teenager. My mom is here. She'll tell you how obedient I was as a teenager. Perfect child I was. And if the rules were don't take off the mask, you don't take the mask off. So I remember, he's instructing, and he remember, he told me how, how it worked. There was a, a bunch of us there. Now, you have to understand, back in the day when I was 14, in like the mid-90s, we didn't have like these semi-automatic like paintball guns like they have now. These were these pump-action paintball guns. Now, you have to follow this in order to understand the story, okay? It was a paintball gun that had two barrels, a, a barrel at the top and a barrel at the bottom. And how it worked was you had like a tube with 10 paintballs in it, and you put the tube inside the top barrel so far, and then a paintball would drop down in the bottom barrel. You'd pump the gun, and you'd shoot the gun. Everybody following me? Okay, it's really, really important detail that you understand this. But they told us, they said, listen, you got to be careful not to put the tube too far in the top barrel, because if you do, you can't get it out to reload. you got 10 paintballs. And these was like $1.50 uh, a, a tube. And my mom gave me like $9 for the whole week of camp. And so I was like, you know, rationing out my paintballs here. And so I remember I bought a couple of tubes, I put them in my, in my pocket, and they split up into teams, and they said, all right, what's going to happen is one team's going to go and hide, one team's going to count, and then we're going we're gonna to fire, right? And so here I go, you guys understand, I'm 14 years old, I'm sweating like a roasted pig, right? My mask is fogging up, I've got this paintball, you know, uh, this gun in, I'm trying to make sure that they don't fall out, and they said, if your paintballs fall on the ground, don't use them, because they're dirty and they'll jam the gun up. 
And so I said, okay, I got it. And so he said, three, two, one, go. And here I go. I'm 14. I'm <laughs> running through. I'm sweating, right? And I go, okay, I got to get the high ground. High ground. This is my thought. I'm going to get the high ground, right? If I have the high ground, I can shoot down on them. So I run up this hill. I mean, I'm wearing like, you know, three layers of coats. And I got this paintball gun. And I'm trying not to, you know, I'm trying to see out of my mask. I run up this hill. This is, by the way, this is as true as I'm telling you this right now. I'm not exaggerating, right? I'm telling the truth. I run up this hill. And I get ready. Now I was kind of a bigger kid back then, right? And so I find like this little tree, and I kind of just get down on the ground. And I'm ready to go. I'm thinking, man, I am not getting taken out. And so I remember, three, two, one, go. And here comes the other team. And then they start firing. Paintballs are flying by me, you know. And I'm not even aiming. I'm like pumping the gun and going, boom, like this. And pumping, boom, like this, right? Finally, I ran out of paintballs. It was time to reload. So I quickly got in my pocket. I pulled out. And in the heat of battle, in the heat of battle, I put the tube in all the way in. Oh, I can't get it out now. I thought, to, I, I meant to think of myself, okay, I can't, can't surrender. I can't let them know that I messed up. I can't let them know that I didn't do the right thing. And so I, I don't know what to do. And so as a 14-year-old, I begin to reason in my mind, what am I going to do? And I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. What I'll do is I'll, I'll load the gun and I'll fire one of the paintballs at like a tree and the recoil will cause the tube to kind of come out like it's a 357 Magnum or something like that, right? It's just a little pump-action paintball gun, right? So I'm, so I'm, thinking, I'm thinking, okay, I'll fire, and then boom, it'll, it'll shoot the, 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 the tube out so I can grab it. And so I literally, I stood up, and I, I load the gun, and I pointed at a tree, and I begin to fire. But then right before I began to fire, I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. This is like a $1.50 a tube here. I can't lose all these paintballs if they fall on the ground. I know what I'll do. I'll catch the tube when it comes out. It's true as I'm telling this story right now. It's true as I'm telling. I'll catch the tube when it comes out. Didn't really put two and two together at that moment. You understand? Heat of the battle, right? I mean, I got paintballs whizzing by me, you know? I'm trying to just survive out there. And you, can you imagine being the other team going, what is he doing? And so I remember I load the gun, and I go to fire. I put my hand out just like this. It's right in front of the barrel. I pull the trigger, and at the moment I pulled the trigger is when I realized what you realized when I said that. I remember I shot myself, and I remember it was a white paintball. It, it hurt so bad. My hand was like sizzling. And I remember I shot myself in the hand with a paintball gun. And I just fall on the ground, ah! Ah! right? And finally I get, I say, I'm out, I'm out, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. And they're like, man, what happened? You get hit? Yeah, I got hit, man. They got me, man. It was a good shot. Direct hit right on the hand here. I'll tell you, it was a mess, right? Fogging up, shot myself in the hand. I didn't want to surrender. You know, honestly, all I could have did was kind of said, time out, time out, I messed up. Let me go get reloaded. Let me have somebody help me. But you know why I didn't do that? Because there will always be pressure to act like we have it all together. Always. Especially in our social media world. In our social media world, it seems like what is valuable is putting your best life forward. Making sure that everyone sees how clean your house is and how great your kids are and how wonderful your life is. Nobody ever puts the, the bad moments and the bad days and the bad times and the arguments on social media, but they put their best life forward because we live in a society that values people that have it all together. We live in a society that values when, when, when you put out something that it looks like you have no problems. It looks like that everything is going well. And so we shy away from ever becoming vulnerable in our life because we think that being vulnerable is not valuable. But in Galatians chapter number 6, verses 2 through 5, we see the absolute opposite. As God comes to us and he says, bear one another's burdens. And just that statement alone tells us two things. First of all, it tells us that in life we're going to have burdens that we have to bear. That life is not always going to be easy. That things aren't always going to be put together. That we're not always going to have things the way that we want, that in our life there's going to be seasons and times that we have burdens to bear. It tells us that, and 
bear one another burdens also tells us that not only will we have burdens to bear, but also sometimes in our life we're going to be in a season where the burden is so heavy that we need someone else's help. Bear one another's burdens. And so the question this morning is simply this. Will you find value in being vulnerable? Or will you continue to work as hard as you can to try to convince others that you have it all together? I look here in this passage and I see very simply two, two key points. Number one, I see the daily burdens we have to bear. The daily burdens we have to bear. Now, we're in Galatians 6, 2 through 5, but I'm going to skip down to verse 5 and work backwards a little bit because I think it helps us to understand the context of the entire passage. Look at verse number 5. It says this, for each will have to bear his own load. So the Bible is very clear here that in our lives, there are daily burdens that we have to bear. Each will have to bear his own load. There are burdens that will come into your life that are just for you. Just for you. Nobody else. It's your load that you have to carry. It says, for each will have to bear his own load. Now, we understand the Bible is teaching this because, now, I don't normally do this, but I think for this message we had to kind of go. The New Testament, some of you may not know this, was originally written in Greek, okay, in Greek, all right? We've translated it to English, but in the Greek, this, this word load can be translated load or burden. It actually is, it's, it, there's a definition which means the freight or lading of a ship. So when he uses this word load or burden, He's saying that when you bear your own load, when each will bear his own load, he's saying it's like the cargo of a ship. I looked up what it means, the lading of a ship. The lading of a ship is the agreement between the, the cargo owner and the ship owner of what cargo is going to be put on to the ship. So when God is speaking here, what he's simply saying is this, is that each one of you are like a ship. And God has allowed cargo or burdens to be put on your ship that are yours to bear alone. This is a key phrase here. And he's specific in using this word because he says this is for you. This is what God has allowed in your life. This is what God is allowing to be a burden in your life. It is your load to bear. You can't give it to another ship. You can't hand it off to somebody else. It is your burden to bear. And so he says it's like the lading of a ship. It's an agreement between you and life, between you and God, where you are going to bear your load. Everybody has a load to bear. It's kind of like these chairs here, if I can use one of these chairs, right? It's like walking around with a burden, right? And this is going to represent my burden here, okay? And so now God calls us to bear our own burden. It's a contract. We're like a ship, and he allows cargo. And in our lives, we must, this is a key phrase, I want you to get this, we must accept what God allows. We must accept what God allows. Now, there's a difference between what, what God wants and what God allows. It's important to understand this. God is sovereign. And just because you have a heavy burden in your life does not necessarily mean that God is mad at you or he's against you or he doesn't like you. He might just be allowing something in your life for some reason. We don't know why. Matter of fact, even Jesus Christ himself bore a, a, a burden when he said this. It says, and going a little further, he fell on his face and praying, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Even Jesus Christ, when he was going to the cross, the Bible says he went to the garden and he prayed and he said, God, you've given me a burden. It's a burden that no one else can bear. It's a weight that no one else can carry. And if it's possible, is it possible to let this cup pass from me? Is there another way or am I the only one who has to bear this burden? And then Jesus realized, no, it's not what I want. It's what God is allowing in my life. And we need to accept what God allows in our life. There are burdens that come into our life. There are difficulties that come into our life that God is allowing. I don't know why he's allowing it. I don't know how long it's going to last, but God has chosen your ship to put that cargo on, and everyone will bear his own load. Can I say this? There's always a purpose in the burden. There's always a purpose in the burden. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, it says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. 
Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. You see, Jesus Christ thought, maybe I could pass the burden off, but then he said, no, I'm going to accept what God has allowed because I know there's a purpose. Listen, the purpose for, the, for Jesus dying on the cross was so that you and I could sit here today and celebrate, oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. Listen, there was a purpose in the burden, but sometimes God brings burdens into our life. And we ask the question, why would God choose me to deal with this? We ask that question. Now, I don't know, you know, maybe in this room, you're really spiritual and you don't ask that question. But sometimes, even as a pastor, I go, God, why would you choose me to deal with this? This thing that I have to carry around. This burden that I have to bear. Why can't it go to somebody else? Why can't somebody else deal with it? Why is it in my life? Why is it that I have to deal with it? I have a friend. She's since gone to heaven, but her name is Betty Sullivan. And uh, her husband and Mike and Betty, there's a, there's a picture on the screen, <coughs> excuse me, of Mike and Betty Sullivan. And I remember they, they went to the church that I attended, and Betty and Mike, wonderful people. Back in the uh, 1980, Betty was diagnosed with, with MS. She was in the prime of her living life to the fullest. Matter of fact, if you talk to Mike and Betty, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you that they were kind of living a kind of a wild life. And God got their attention. Betty was diagnosed with MS, and she quickly began to, to deteriorate. She went from walking to having to be in a wheelchair and having to be helped. And I, I remember as a kid growing up watching Mike every single Sunday uh, wheel Betty into her wheelchair and, and make sure she was taken care of. Mike was the one that did her makeup, and Mike was the one that did her hair, and Mike was the one that made sure she was taken care of. And I watched as they bore this burden. I don't know. They, I never talked to them and asked them this, but I'm sure that there are moments in their life where Mike or even Betty in their quiet moments would look up to God and say, God, why are you choosing me to deal with this, this burden that I have to bear? Why did MS have to come to our family? Why did this disease have to take over my body? Why is this that you've chosen me to bear? We understand that in life, I don't know if it's MS or if it's a disease or if it's a loss. I don't know what it is in your life, but we all have burdens to bear. And God brings in things into our life that we can't put down. We can't let go. We have to deal with it. And God puts us in our life. And we don't know when it's going to end. We don't know how it's going to happen. We don't know why, but it's a burden that we have to bear. And God says this. He says, for each will bear his own load. But then he says this. In verse number four, he says that there is progress that must be celebrated. He says when, when, when a burden comes into your life and God gives it to you and you accept what God has allowed, then you need to understand that you need to make progress with that burden. Verse number four says this, but, but let each one test his own work and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. Okay, what does that mean? Does that mean we're supposed to like boast in ourselves? Here's what it actually means. What it means is this, is that we have our own load to bear. And sometimes it comes into our life unexpected. We don't know what to do with it, right? We're trying to like figure it out and hold it and get it the right way. Okay, this sounds good. Oh, and this is a little heavy here. And we're trying to just do all we can just to manage it. How many, how many a burden has come into your life and you try to do all you could just to manage it? Unexpected burden, unexpected difficulty, something happening in your life. And you think, how do I handle this? I can't get rid of it. I got to deal with it. It's my burden to bear. And so you begin to figure it out and you begin to work through life in a way, maybe it's with your spouse or maybe it's with uh, your family. And you think, okay, God's given us this burden. Now we have to figure out how we're going to manage it. And all of a sudden, we begin to make some progress. And that thing that overwhelmed us when it first came in, that burden that took us by surprise when it first came out, now we begin to deal with it. We begin to manage it. We begin to kind of get it in a place that we can, we can deal with. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's Maybe it's anxiety in your heart. Maybe it's depression. Maybe it's a, an emotion. And all of a sudden now that burden that overwhelmed you, now you've been able to find a comfortable place to take care of it. And what God is saying in verse number four is this. He's saying, but let each one test his own work. He's saying, if a burden has come into your life, the goal is not to try to get rid of it. The goal is try to make progress with it. 
to get it to a place where it's not overwhelming you, it's not hurting you, it's not destroying you, but you, by trusting God, relying upon his grace, take it from overwhelming to be in a place of comfortableness. And some of you this morning, you understand that, listen, you've made some big, a burden came into your life, but guess what? You made some good progress with it. So for some, I don't know what the burden is, but something happened to you, something happened in you, something happened around you, and you think, man, when that came in my life, it almost crushed me. But guess what? Praise God, you made some progress. Praise God, you were able to move forward. And he says this in the verse. He says, but let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not his neighbor. When a burden comes into our life, you know what we tend to do? We begin to look over here and go, well... It's not as bad as their situation. And it's not as good as that situation. So I guess I'm okay. And God says, when I give you a burden, when I allow a burden in your life, don't look to the right or to the left at what other people are doing or not doing. Why? Because that's not their burden to bear. I look at, someone looks at Betty and thinks, wow, that's a heavy burden. Man, that's an incredible burden. But God doesn't see it that way. God sees every burden that he gives each and every person the same. He knows what you can handle. He knows what he can put in your life. He has a purpose for it. And so don't look over here and say, wow, they've got a heavier burden than me, or they've got a lighter burden than me. They've got the same burden that God wants them to have. Nothing is greater. Nothing is less. And the focus of our lives needs to be that we find a place in our life where we can manage the burdens that God has given to us. I just want to thank God this morning for progress. I want to thank God for the fact that even though that burden came into your life, even though you were overwhelmed by it, yeah, and it almost took you out. Man, it almost took you down. It almost knocked you out. Hey, praise God you're here this morning in the house of the Lord. Oh, that shows me, hey, there's progress that you made. You didn't let it take you down. You didn't let it overwhelm you. You didn't let it take you out. God, by God's grace, you made some progress. Hey, thank God for progress this morning. Thank God that we didn't let it take us out. Thank God that we didn't let it hurt us. Thank God that we let it destroy us. We made some progress this morning. Thank God for progress. The Bible says in Philippians chapter number 3 and verse number 12, it simply says this. It says, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press toward the, the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, I'll tell you, I thank God this morning that though burdens come into our life, though they are ours to bear, thank God that he gives us the grace every day not to be overwhelmed by it, but to be able to manage it and we can make some progress this morning. Some progress. I thank God for progress. Little progress. Yeah, well, it's just a little progress. Hey, it's progress. You say, well, you know, I've got my good days and bad days. It's better than having all bad days. You made some progress. And some of you right now, can I just speak to you? Some of you right now that are overwhelmed by a burden in your life, the goal is not to try to get rid of it. The goal is to try to make progress with it. So that God can get you to a place where you can manage it every single day. You say, but I don't want anybody to know. I know there's pressure to have it all together. I know there is. But God wants you to manage that burden. You see, we cannot compare ourselves to others. Comparison is the thief of joy, by the way. You know that? You want to you, you you ruin your day? Go compare yourself to somebody else's life. It'll ruin your day like that. I mean, literally, you're having a good day. You think, man, I'm a good you know, mom or dad. I mean, I did all kinds of you go on. You go on Facebook and just scroll for a little bit. You'll feel bad eventually. Eventually, you'll feel bad. <laughs> Why? Because comparison is the thief of joy. And when we begin to compare our life and think, man, my life is not as easy as that person. Or my life is not as this person. I wish I this and that. Hey, what about your burden? You see, God has called us to bear our own burden and to make progress with it. Kind of reminds me again of my, my friend Betty. Betty, she dealt with MS for many, many years. And it got to the point where she couldn't, she couldn't, even, she couldn't even move. She could barely hold her head up. She would keep her head down. Mike would have to help her up. She couldn't talk anymore. Couldn't really do anything. But Mike still had to go to work. He still had to provide for the family. And so Betty would get in a wheelchair. Mike would get her in the wheelchair every morning, make sure she was taken care of, make sure she had what she needed. And then he would go off to work for hours and hours. And there would be Betty sitting there. Now, I don't know about you, but man, if I had all that time to think to myself, I would think, God, what is, what is he doing? 
Why would you do this to me? But see, Betty didn't decide to do that. Betty decided that she was going to make some progress with her burden. I have this wonderful picture here of Betty's Bible. I love this Bible. Mike, Mike sent this to me. And if you look closely at this Bible, you'll see a couple things on the corner here. You see, you notice how the, the, one, the one corner here is kind of, kind of, you know, puffed up, kind of swollen. That's from saliva. You see, when Mike would go to work, Betty would have a little tray. And she would sit there for hours a day. Mike would leave the Bible on her tray. She would spend time reading the Bible. And when she got done with one page, she would reach down with her mouth. Turn the page. And read her Bible. Turn the page. So much so that the saliva literally soaked into the pages. You see the cover there with the teeth marks to be able to grip. You see, I'm telling you, I don't know what burden's in your life, but God did not bring that burden in your life to overwhelm you. God did not bring MS into Betty's life to overwhelm her. But what he wanted her to do was make some progress. Make some progress. I can't read the Bible with my hands, so I'll read it with my mouth. Make some progress. I'm sure there were times where she wanted to give up. I'm sure there were times when it was tough. I'm sure there were times when it was difficult. But she thought, God, I'm not going to boast in my neighbor. Because even though other people are better or they're faster or they can use their hands, their burden is not my problem. You've given this to me, and I'm going to do everything I can to make progress. What about you? Is there a burden in your life? You ready to quit? You ready to give up? Maybe this morning your decision say, you know what? I'm just going to do all I can to move forward with the burden, like Betty did. Betty went home to be with the Lord many years ago. I never saw Betty without a smile on her face, never. She couldn't talk, barely any words, but she would try to talk to you, try to just, just try to talk to you and smile, and there's her Bible. God wants us to make progress because there are daily burdens that only we can bear. But then we see also in the next verses, we see that there are excessive burdens that we need to share. Now, I want you to follow along here in verse number two. It says this. Now, I'll, I'll read it to you because this is interesting. It says in verse number two, it says, bear one another burden. Okay, so he uses the word burden again there. He says load is this lading of a ship. It's the cargo on your ship. You can't, you know, uh, pass it off to another ship. But then he uses the word burdens here, and we would think that it's probably the same Greek word, right? Burdens, load, burden, same thing. But it's actually a different translation, a different definition of the same word. If you look it up, it says this. It says that the word burden here is the word baros, which means heavy, weight, or trouble. See, this goes beyond the lading of a ship. This goes beyond the burden that, that you have to bear. This is excessive. This is heavier than you can bear. Bigger. This is more troublesome. And that's why he says here, we've got to bear the heavy burdens. We can't bear the daily burdens. That's, that's theirs to bear. But there are going to come seasons in our life where heavy burdens come in. And as the church and as believers and as people of faith, we need to look out and see who is bearing a heavy burden, a heaviness, a weight, and say, you know what? We need to help bear their burdens, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. It says we can have seasons of excessive burdens. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1, it says for everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. And so sometimes, here's what happens. Sometimes in my life, I got my burden under control. Like my burden, right? I got that under control. I'm good. I'm making progress. I'm moving forward. I'm doing everything I can, man. It's I'm telling you, it's a new day, new hour. I'm going to move forward, and, and then I got it under control. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we got this excessive burden now. Okay. All right, all right, okay, okay, wait a minute. Hang on a second. I didn't see this one coming here. And this one is, I, I don't really know what to do with this. This is a season in my life that I'm going through, a difficulty in my life, a loss 
maybe a, a, a diagnosis or, or something, a financial reversal, something in my life that even though I got my burden under control, now I've got this excessive burden that I need to deal with. And, and how do I deal with it? How do I find hope in it? How do I not let it overwhelm me? You see, you have to understand that all of us are dealing with, with burdens. I'm going to ask my, my beautiful wife if she would come up here and help me, okay? She didn't know I was going to ask her, so I may, I may be sleeping on the couch today. All right, okay, all right? And see, what happens is Becky here, she goes, we go to the same church. Here, turn this way, if you wouldn't mind, Becky. Thank you. Becky and I, we go to the same church, and we're trying to do everything we can, you know, to just, man, just try to make it through another week, another day, and, and we, you know, we're trying to, you know, manage our burdens, because I got burdens, and she has burdens, and, and everyone has burdens. By the way, there's nobody in here that doesn't have burdens, okay? And, and you got burdens, she's managing it. What happens, though, is, here, I'm going to get another chair here. I'm playing a musical chair. You stay right there, Becky. You stay right there. What happens is, is that I come in sometimes to church with excessive burdens, and she's doing okay right? You know, you might be sitting next to somebody right now who's going through a season of excessive burdens right now. Right now. I mean, it's overwhelming. I mean, it's about to crush them. And they're here just trying to hang on. And what happens is, is we come to church and we do, we do church really well. I mean, we're good church people and we come into church and we sing and we say, hello, how are you? God bless you, sister, right? Amen, 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 right? Not the whole time we're dealing with these burdens. And then all of a sudden Becky looks over and is like, man, that, that guy looks like he's got a lot on his plate. Feels like he's, you know. And God is calling us to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, look, we can't, I don't have time to get into it, but the law of Christ is what he's been talking about the whole, this whole chapter, this whole book. Where he's saying, don't fulfill the law. Well, now all of a sudden he's saying, fulfill the law. Well, what's the law of Christ? It's love. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 14, that the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so what God is saying to us when he's saying to bear one another's burdens, he's saying to show love to people. When you bear a burden, you are loving that person. And when you love somebody, you will look to them and say, here's, here's a couple of these. How do I bear somebody's burdens? How about a couple of questions like this? Are you doing okay? That's a simple question. How about this? Can I pray with you about something? I'm trying to bear a burden. How about this? Is there anything that you need? You see, here's the problem with church sometimes, is that we walk into the house of God and we have the pressure to try to put it all together, to try to make sure that nobody knows the problems that we're dealing with. Nobody knows what the things, and we got to make sure we hide this. We can't let them know that we fought last night. We can't let them know that the kids aren't listening. We can't let them know that we've got situations. And so we walk in, hey, how you doing? I'm in church. Don't worry about me. Hey, just, just look over there. Look over there. Look, okay, don't look at my burden. Don't look at my burden. It's all good. It's all good. I'm, I'm doing great. Fantastic. Isn't the coffee good today? I love the coffee. It's great. They make it wonderful. It's wonderful. That's good. Did you get your Starbucks card? I didn't get mine. I must have went to spam. I'll check it later. And so. I got my bird. Don't look at me. No, no, don't look at me. Don't look. Look over there, please. Okay, thank you. All right, good. All right. Whew. Whew. I feel better now. All right. I feel good. Nobody sees my burdens. And the Bible says, you know what we need to do as believers? We don't need to come in and try to act like this is a spiritual beauty pageant where we strut our stuff down the aisle. We need to come in. You know what some questions we need to start asking each other? Hey, how are you doing? You okay? Is everything all right? And you see, here's the thing. Is that if we start doing that as a church, the only way that we can fulfill verse 2 is if the person being asked the question is willing to be vulnerable. Because somebody walks in and they say, you doing okay? Now you have a choice. Do I keep it hidden? Or will I find value in vulnerability? You see, if we're unwilling to be vulnerable, then the people around us will not be valuable. And even though I'm trying to figure this out on my own, and even though I'm trying to hold this together, God has placed people in my life 
that are right next to me. That if I'm willing to do it, willing to be vulnerable, willing to be open, when they ask me, are you doing okay? Are you doing okay? I appreciate you asking that. You know, actually, I'm not, okay? My kids are crazy. I'll tell you what. And, I mean, you hear my kids running around here, right, and screaming and all this stuff. I'll tell you, I'm a little overwhelmed right now. And I got this, I'll tell you, I was doing good. I got my burden. I'm doing okay. But, man, I got this excessive burden. And, and I don't know. I mean, if you're asking me, I, I don't know if maybe there's a, if we could help me a little bit. Yeah, sure. Now, she's got to adjust her seat over there. Adjust your seat over there so we can, we can yeah, move your seat over there. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right, now. And so now what's happening is now we're bearing each other's burdens. And now I can, I can handle it. Now, here's what happens. Now, now, watch this now. Here's what happens, all right? I'm, we're going to walk through this, okay? And you've got to help me here, okay? All right? Mom, can you come up here real quick? My mom's going to kill me. I, I have no place to live now. I'll tell you what. I, I'm, all right, Mom, come on. Mom, grab a chair over there if you would. Wouldn't mind, okay? All right? I picked the people who would love me unconditionally, who wouldn't leave the church, all right? Yeah, oh, over here, over here, over here. Over here. Now, just bear with me. We're almost done. We're almost done. Right over here, Mom. Come sit next to your son. Some ne- your favorite son. I got, a brother. I got a brother who's younger. Mom, the favorite, right? I'm just joking. So, so now what happens is this. All right, now I'm bearing the burden, right? Now, because Becky's helping me. Hang on one second. Hold that. Hold that one right there. All right, we got this. We're good. All right? Now what happens is this. Now, this lady comes in, and she's got her burdens under control, but she's got some heavy burdens too, all right? Now, look, Becky's helping me. Now, watch this now. All right, see if we can do this, all right? Now, because Becky's helping me, I look over and go, whoa, <laughs> wow, that's a big burden. Wow. Man, I don't even want to know how that happened. But, man, I'll tell you what, you, hey, you, you doing okay? No? You, well, you know what? Watch this now. Because someone's helping me bear my burden now I got a free hand, and I can help bear her burden. Go ahead and scoot your chair over like Becky's a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Turn it aside. Turn it. Move over. Yeah, move away from me. I don't want you near me. I don't want you near me. There you go. All the way. Turn it over. All right. All right. All right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Now here's what happens. Look now. So we hold it up. Okay. Move over a little bit more, Becky. Move over a little bit more like that. Turn. Turn to face each other so you guys can face each other. There we go. There we go. Turn to face each other. There we go. Perfect. Thank you, Mom. So now what's happened is we're bearing each other's burdens. We're dealing with our burdens. We got those in a comfortable place. And now we can deal and help bear one of those burdens. And here's what happens. Eventually, these burdens will go away because these are excessive. They're seasonal. They come in for a minute, and then they leave. These burdens are here. They're daily. They're every day. We got to deal with them, right? But what happens is once these burdens go away, yeah. And this burden goes away. All of a sudden, because I'm bearing the burden of somebody else. There you go. Right there. Now, guess what just happened? The person that I went to church with, that I never talked to, that I kind of just saw every once a week, now all of a sudden, because we bear each other's burden, guess what happened? Now we're connected. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that? Now, instead of just going to church, now we're connecting with others. And it's interesting. Why would God say bear one another's burdens? You know why? Because our burdens are what bring us together. Our burdens are what bring us together. The unity of this church is not going to be based upon the fact that we live in the same neighborhood or we have the same age, or we have the same like in a sports team. What's going to bring our church together in unity is when we bear each other's burden. Because now we go from just going to church to now being the church that God wants us to be. You know, this kind of reminds me, it looks like something. I don't know if it, this reminds you of something, like in a circle like this. It kind of reminds me, I don't know, like a small group. Huh? It looks like a small group, doesn't it? Right? Isn't that pretty neat? Huh? Why do we have small groups? Because we have burdens. And God has called us to bear one another's burdens so that we can be a strong church. 
so that we could be a unified church, so that we can see God do great things. Listen, let me tell you something right now. It's okay to not be okay. But until you are willing to be vulnerable, you'll never see the people next to you as valuable. And though we live in a culture, in a world, where there's pressure to have it all together, can I just say this? There is so much more value in being vulnerable. Because God will help you bear the burdens that he allows in your life. Can we pray together? Lord, we love you. God.